Hi, it's Rudy Gobach. I am gplus.to slash topgolf on Google Plus. Looking at the papers, Sunday Business Post and the Sunday Times in my back garden. I'm an American in Ireland and I occasionally go out here in the sun under the Irish beautiful sky. Look at things that are happening in Ireland. You know what? Surprisingly, there's stuff that's, that's good for Ireland. Perhaps even this, the Oncotype DX test, available for 3,200 euro that you can get on a private scheme in Ireland. The point I'm mentioning is that lots of stuff are being cut out especially stuff like expensive pharmaceuticals or expensive tests and it makes front page it's on the business post I'm concerned about cancer for anybody because it runs in my genes and um, we'd like to figure out a way that that test or better treatments were uh, able for Irish people living in Ireland here's a cool thing John Isle gets front page story about Guinness showing that there's a direct link between the price of Guinness in Dublin pubs and things such as the movement of investments. It's called a deflationary threat, which is find, it finds out that look, um, you can actually link deflationary attitude to the decrease in the cost of the price of Guinness in Ireland. I don't know where they found Guinness for three euro a pint in Dublin. So I'll read John's further market intelligence with great interest. Inside the paper, if it puts up with me as the wind blows, interesting things here about success stories in Irish business. Happy face of Martin Mortel, Chief Executive of Data Electronics, sold his company, big whack of money, 99.6 million euro for Data Electronics to the British firm, to Citigroup. Good stuff. From Havoc comes growth. Smiling face, David Coughlin, Managing Director of Havoc. It's a games company. I teach from the games development curriculum, and it's a really good thing. 110 employees he's got right now, and he's moving up, moving up the world, more employees. McDonald's is hitting back at a Temple Bar argument. Basically what's happening is McDonald's isn't being allowed to uh, establish itself in Temple Bar. Well, they haven't made that decision yet. What I'd point out is that a lot of little guys, a lot of people out of work right around the corner from McDonald's living in social housing that could take jobs there. And for uh, Temple Bar properties to get too pretentious about what actually is allowed to exist in Temple Bar, I think is wrong. Inside the paper, if I can flip the page in the wind. There's a story about the business boot camp. Entrepreneurs and uninnovators are really invited uh, to Galway, Biz Camp Galway, Saturday, the 10th of September at NUI Galway, bizcamp.ie stroke Galway. Be there. It's a good thing. You might meet Michele Nalon there at Biz Camp, but it's not a good thing. This new cybercrime law. Tommy Collison writes a story. Uh, it's basically a piece of legislation that's being cranked into law without really a lot of uh, uh, business interaction. So basically, um, y you got to keep records is what the thing's making an offense. Non-reporting of a discovered cybercrime is being made an offense in Ireland, and that's not a smart thing. Not a smart thing. McKelly points out why it's going to be hard to hard to keep track of this stuff. <laughs> Adrian Weckler finds something worth a silly season label. But basically what's happened is uh, an Irish legislator in um, the Shannad, the senators, Fidelma, Fidelma Healy Eames, made a considered argument saying how games consoles obviously produce deep vein thrombosis. And there would be a microchip put inside the games consoles to uh, prevent them from running more than two hours at a time. Uh, she was not available for a follow-up phone call from Adrian, which is kind of a shame because I would like to figure out how She's done her research and where she's getting her, her stats. Adrian's looked at the Central Statistics Office for information more about this melody. Can't seem to find there to where it is actually worth the time or the newsprint for such a silly season technology article. In the section called Out on Your Own, Elena Regan writes about Robin Blanford. He's the founder of a company called Decisions for Heroes, about more than profit. Now, Robin's got a really good thing going in the way of software that could help the Irish health authorities actually bring to bear a better solution to the transport of people or, or um, body organs to a donor. Blanford, his aim hasn't really changed from the day one when he wanted to build some kind of a system that combined his expertise in digital media along with, with his, his uh, application as a, as a voluntary cliff explorer. Good man, good idea, D4H on Twitter. In Sunday Times, um, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of page uh, counts being given away to Gabe Byrne, a retired broadcaster running for the Office of President of Ireland. It's more of an opportunistic move, not really a political move. Inside this paper, it's some pretty, this is going to cost me money. 
so what's happening is the banks are going to change their debit cards, which is really low transaction, like four cents per transaction, to something that's going to be more like 10% of a transaction. It's a it's a proper debit card when you can use it internationally. Uh, Sarah McInerney points out what the impact of that is. She talked to Colin Lyon from Relex Payments, who said, you know, across the sector, the Irish retail sector, it's probably going to cost 24 million euro to impose this change, which is 24 million of additional uh, charges to the consumer. Inside his column called Irish Outlook, Damien Kybert says we're right to shrink from the t tornado, and he's pointing out that, um, look, we've made some of the tough cuts already. Let's do more of it. Ireland has to make its own thinking come to, come to bear. Um, points out how, what this means. Um, maybe getting tighter on social welfare, cutting back on some of the tax breaks, and as a result, having having control of your own budget. Sarkozy has had to give up at least two times now, give up some of his holiday. He's back in, in, um, in France to talk to Angela Merkel about potentially euro bonds, new bonds backed by all the member countries, which is a, a big step forward in helping countries like Italy or even France prevent the fault or high interest rates. This is cool. John Burns has found a famine-proof Galway town. Now, several of them, researchers at the National Center for Geocomputation at NUI Maynooth, have collected census data from different electoral districts, and they pointed out several different towns that did not go down in population. Did not go down in population. Uh, so, like uh, population that he cites first show where small towns lost population, and then he says, "Look, there's these other ones like Canturk and Cork, Balmullet." and Mayo, Scarf, and Clare, they actually went up in population primarily because of the quality of the workhouses that were there. Hey, hey, hey. here's a guy, a worker. It's Pat Whelan, the butcher. And the article, Make No Bones About It, is written by uh, Sandra O'Connell, explaining how Pat's got to where he is with massive amounts of turnover, traveling the world for years to learn more about his trade. And inside the uh, magazine sections, there's some, some more stuff on food festivals. Now, this article here doesn't even mention tip food lounge, the tip food producers as a hashtag on Twitter, and it doesn't mention a big event that's coming up called a tip um, a long table in Rockwell College in Cashel in another week's time. But the Sunday Business Post Agenda magazine in the Eat Drink section, that's edited by Jillian Nellis, points out that the West for Westport Food Festival is running, and the smiling face of Enda Kenny, who's a local TD, is there. He's also the Taoiseach. Uh, he's pictured with Maddie and Nell McLaughlin uh, with their, uh, the launch of the Westport Food Festival. Um, you know, I circled this thing here saying it seems like everything, every town and village has a food festival. And, and sometimes it's nothing more than just a glorified market. Uh, tip round table, tip food is the hashtag on Twitter you got to follow. Tip, the tip long table is actually, it's actually an event worth seeing. We can't see these guys on the freaking a television screen without uh, Mia stopping everything and listening to what they're saying. Kathy Foley writes about what they've what they've done, and basically he's saying that, that she's saying that guys like Jed Word are a mover. And they're actually movers and shakers in Irish society. They came from a private college, uh, King's Hospital, along with Leah Bradker, right down the street, Rockwell College uh, generates a lot of people uh, that that connect up later on in life and uh, with their mates that they learned learned to connect with in college, and yet the Irish taxpayer is paying for this, as she calls it valuable old boys network. Hmm. I would imagine Ryan Tuberty is part of an old boys network. Uh, he's given up his Twitter account and in um, a really interesting point of view being made by the Sunday Times, you know, Ryan was being followed by 60,000 people but he was only, only following 44 people so it wouldn't have been unusual for him to discover there's nobody talking on Twitter. <laughs> he's only following 44 people that really didn't talk a lot anyway. Ryan used it as a broadcast method not really a conversation method. Okay, um, hey, inside there's a conversationalist. It's Mia. She's looking at something that I think we're going to share concerning the iPad. What's that called? Dora's Coloring Adventure. Is it one of your favorites? <laughs> also Dora. inside the paper, the in gear section of Everyone the Sunday Times points out a really cool thing. A way you can earn money with an app. So basically, um, it's called Gig Walk. The premise, tens of thousands of small digital tasks worth doing. And once you decide to do them, I mean a typical Gig Walk might get you four bucks. 
It's in the U.S., it's in the U.K. soon. Typical things, map a mall, visit a dentist, hang out at a hotel, get a room. Or you can go to my back garden and do a quick survey of it. You'll find out in the shade, we have nice ferns growing and beautiful flowers. Mia likes walking through the weeds. Actually, it's grass. And then there are the marigolds. They actually keep away the cat. Ruth doesn't seem to want to recognize that. A dahlia with our little piece of biodiversity in action, attracting the bees. And our tomatoes. They're actually, they're actually turning red soon, don't you think? Okay, catch up where I am. Look at the comms for photos for Irish eyes. You can see the bees as they're nesting and growing the nectar. Or you can catch up with my photos. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.